there we go. Okay, well, I'm Becky Page, and this is going to be our last team call on the well for 2018. However, there's going to be a lot of activity coming up next week, so don't think that we're just saying peace out for the year. In fact, I think you'll be hearing from all of us quite a bit. I tell you what, if you haven't already, reach out to a couple of team members and remind them that this call is happening so that they can make sure and jump on and just have them enter um, that Zoom meeting ID that's there on the graphic or send it to them and they can join us. But I wanted to record tonight's call. And first of all, let me tell you a little bit about where my head was when I was thinking of doing this. Um, I just think, you know, there will probably be tears tonight on this call, which for me, always makes things better. I just, I can't help it. It's the therapist in me. I'm like, give me the vulnerability. Um, but as I look back, I'm getting ready to have my five year anniversary with Plexus, which I just have to giggle at God's plan. But when I look back, I can see so many trials and struggles and there's stuff that was really obvious. Um, and some of you guys know about some of the things that happened in my life, but then there's other stuff I've been through that I would never have shared with anyone because they were the trials of my mind or the trials of my, um, self-perception, you know, the stuff that can be really hard on us that we might never feel like we can share about, but there's all kinds of things that happen, um, in your day-to-day -day business. And I think that most of you guys have probably on your own suffered through some pretty deep valleys. So I wanted to invite two people that I truly in real life love and admire, Rachel Neagle and Jen Wolf. And they've both been with the company long enough and they've both been through their own mountaintops and valleys. So I wanted to just sort of spend the evening interviewing them. Um, we'll try to keep it brief. Uh, but at the same time, we want to give you guys, <laughs> Rachel made notes, but both of these ladies, they can talk and, and it's a wonderful thing, <laughs> but we, we want, we don't want to, you know, we don't want to keep y'all up late, but I really do think you're going to identify. And the heart of what we want to share tonight is that this is the business that you need that you don't always realize you need. And partially that's because there's, there's stuff coming for you. There's stuff coming up around the corner in your life that you can't see. And this is the kind of business that really um, allows you to go through those peaks and valleys and will still be here um, even as you recover from them. So I'm gonna pull up my list of questions here. And I just, I'm gonna, um, I'm probably just gonna, ladies, ask you guys, like, I'll just ask the question and you guys can unmute and share as you feel like. But first of all, as we get into talking about going through trials and hardship and having growth in the midst of all that, um, I really just want to start tonight with y'all tell us about a season with Plexus when you were really flying high or just enjoying the best of the best in your business. Tell us what was happening and how you felt about it. And Rach, we'll start with you and then I'll kick it over to Wolf. Okay. That one was really easy for me. I mean, you know, Becky and I both joined Plexus. We're coming up on our five-year anniversary in January. Um, she joined about 10 days before I did. I think I was her second ambassador. Um, and when I first joined, we were in momentum from day one. And for those of you who are new or don't know what I mean by momentum, I mean, we were growing and we were adding on a daily basis and we were ranking up every month. Um, there was one month where we double ranked, uh, we both rank, ranked Ruby. We both ranked senior Ruby. And, you know, we just, we, we could taste Emerald and taste our first trip to Hawaii. And um, I missed it by a month. Beck just missed it by uh, just a little bit later. Um, but y'all, that was our norm. Like that's neither one of us had ever done network marketing before. We had no concept of the peaks and valleys that are associated with that, this business. And I think it's one of the reasons that if you are, doing this, whether you're doing it as a side hustle or whether you're doing it because you have your sight set on diamond. I see you, Elizabeth Grieve, sight set on diamond. Um, you know, 
it's really important that you learn about the industry as well. So often we talk about professional development and that is huge. It really is. I don't know that there's another industry that will ever reveal more of your strengths and or shortcomings um, oftentimes on the same day um, that network marketing does. But it's really important to understand the industry because Becky and I had the privilege of going to corporate um, at, when she won Silver Stars and it, there had just been this dramatic slowdown in our business that happened in June. And we were like, what is going on? And we talked to Tarl Robinson, our, um, he's, uh, the, the CEO of Plexus. And he was like, you know, of course he's been around network marketing his entire life. And he said, Oh, well, you know, June, July, and August are always, um, some of our slowest months because people reallocate funds to, um, summer camp and vacations and back to school. And we just, we weren't prepared for that at all. Um, and so, but I do remember that time. I mean, when you get to experience momentum in your business, it's wonderful because it's exciting and it's energetic. Um, but it's also important that you prepare yourself for the work that it takes to maintain momentum. And I think that's something that we were not well prepared for. Jen, what about you? Um, mine's the same when I first joined. Uh, well, no, I had it twice. I hit momentum in 2017 and that also was amazing. But when I first joined in 2015, I went from silver to senior Ruby in 13 months. And I remember looking back thinking like, it's taking so long. And now I look back and I'm like, thank God my senior golds haven't quit on me because they are, they're in three years and they're still senior gold. I couldn't imagine that for myself. Um, I think what I loved about that time is I was naive and I knew no failure. So all I knew was everybody above me had gone emerald in 20 months or less. So 27 months for me felt like an eternity. It's almost like I had highly positive expectations, you know? Um, and uh, when you are brought into a team that is in that much momentum and you hear all the stories and you see all those things, you set those expectations for yourself as well. Um, uh, it, my, that going through all of that really dictated my actions and my mindset. Um, and it naturally crushed fear, which is what I was thinking about when I was thinking about this question. Um, I didn't get paralyzed and I trusted the process more. There are overcoming the, the paralyzing fear of not growing is so hard. <laughs> it is, it's harder than growing. It's harder than anything else in the business, I think. Um, but when I were, you know, flying high, I just think like for a long time, I just didn't realize how, how quickly I was ranking up because of what I compared it to. So I think it's a double-edged sword. Sometimes people can compare their journeys to how fast other people go. But in the same, in the same sense, what I want to, what I want to do now that we've been through seasons of growth and seasons of lack I want to create a culture and an atmosphere where people have that naive positivity again, or where they aren't comparing or thinking, Oh, well, this might take me this twice as long as her. Um, so anyway, that 2015, 2016 was when I was flying high when I first joined and I didn't know that failure existed. <laughs> I didn't know that slow growth existed. And so I, I grew really quickly because of where my mindset and my actions were. I want y'all to share a little bit about a trial that you've weathered in, in Plexus and whether it was business or personal, you can tell us as much or as little as you want about that. But, but how did this make you feel and how did it impact your, your daily work? Um, you know, for me, I think trials have happened across the board. Um, and that's just life, you know, that's life on life's terms. Um, you know, uh, speaking a little bit to what Jen was saying, I have one memory that stands out vividly and, and something that Bob um, Heilig shared with those of us that were in Hawaii this year is that so often, you know, like Jen said, she was brought into this culture of 
well, she did it in seven months and she hit it in 10 months and -and so-and-so hit it in five months. And we always really want to champion these almost like fast start stories, you know, but one of the things that Bob said that really stuck with me is that your teams will learn more from your failures and will learn more from your struggles than they will from your successes. Um, So I'm gonna be really vulnerable with you guys tonight. Um, I consider you guys my family, um, and so in saying that, I would appreciate that the things that I share be held in confidence. Um, but, um, but I'm, I'm going to be vulnerable with you. So, um, as far as the business, you know, that I mentioned er earlier that the first time that momentum really slowed for me was when I hit Emerald. Um, and I stayed at that rank for 11 months and I have a very vivid memory of, I had flown up to, um, Pittsburgh to train, um, the Pennsylvania team that's up there. And there's a, there's a diamond named Rebecca Folks and she's one of my dear friends now, but she and I hit Emerald the exact same month. And the day that I got off the plane in Dallas to make my connection to Lubbock where I lived, I, you know, of course checked Facebook and I saw that she had hit diamond and I went into the bathroom at DFW airport and I ugly cried. I ugly cried. Becky was still working then, so I couldn't call her. Um, I called Andrea and I called Roz and I was like, what am I doing wrong? And that was the first season where I let fear and comparison and what am I doing wrong kind of grip me. And, you know, when people talk about being paralyzed by fear, it's a very, very real thing um, where you just are like you're you get frozen into inactivity. Um, because you literally feel paralyzed to move. Um, we'd had a back office changeover at that point, which seems like nothing, you know, nowadays. Um, but um, I just was really scared. Um, and then in the midst of this, um, my husband had begun to have some personal um, health struggles that, um, that went on literally for four years. Um, and I'm a fixer. Becky can do do my Enneagram for y'all at some point, but um, I tend to, um, I never really understood what codependency was until the past couple of months of my life, but basically it's where you say, um, I care more about fixing you and your problems than I do about taking care of myself. So what happened was I became consumed with, with fixing my husband and everything else went to the bottom of the pile. Um, including my own productivity, um, my own confidence and my abilities to lead. And basically when you spend your life trying to fix somebody else, you are left um, exhausted, worn out, insecure, resentful, and truly it's that picture of being unable to fill an empty cup. Um, in, in a moment of vulnerability, I will share with you guys that um, what, what we thought was a battle with anxiety and some other issues was later revealed to be um, a struggle with alcohol. Um, and my husband entered rehab um, in April of this year. So for almost 40 days, I was a single parent, a single income for our family. Um, and I was also a leader of a team that was launching new products and trying to get back into momentum. So the, that's probably the darkest season that I have gone through. And I'm, I'm blessed that I have leaders around me that knew what was going on in my life um, enough that they for months carried the load for me when I couldn't. Um, but then also uh, pushed me and encouraged me when they knew that I could. You want me to go with my trials? Um, I kept mine business related. Um, I have had minor personal trials. In fact, when I was thinking about this question, I honestly felt like, um, I honestly felt like God showed me like, there's always trials. <laughs> like this is, this is what you, I felt like he told me, um, this is what you do. You, we overcome together. And so I was just like, what don't you want me to bring up? Like that's life. I've gained weight on, um, since joining the company. I've had to overcome that. Um, 
small town living, feeling like people judge me, people saying hateful things once I started making lots of money and having success. I mean, it's just one thing after the next. So since I couldn't pick one, I just stuck with business. So the trial that I chose to talk about tonight is just backward momentum, which sucks. <laughs> um, and so the story I wanted to talk about is in May of 2016, after I had ranked up so quickly, um, I had 860 points. And by December of that year, I had 480. So I had fallen back like 400 points, which is so many people. And it's such a drastic change in your business, especially at that time. Um, and so what I felt was annoyed, honestly. Um, like, let's just be honest. <laughs> I was really annoyed. Um, and I was caught up in like all the wrong things. It's kind of like, when you're 21 and something goes wrong and then when you're 33 and something goes wrong and you have like more life and experience and you're like, Oh, so I was just, it was as if I was in my adolescence within Plexus <laughs> during that trial. Um, I, I felt like my team didn't care and I had a lot of resentment. I really did. And I, re I remember saying over and over again, like, where's my person? <laughs> like what, what am I doing wrong? What did my uplines do with me that helped me grow? in 13 months, but I can't get anybody anywhere near that type of growth in twice as long. So what's like, what's going on? Um, and again, I was just full of fear. I was paralyzed. I was overthinking. I was doubting everything. And I learned, I learned a ton in that season, but I'm not really going to go into all of that because I kept that for a, for a different time when you want me to give advice. So, um, but yeah, that, that was mine. When I, my first first time I had moved backward because I was facing, it was, it was literally, do I file bankruptcy or do I go Emerald? <laughs> um, like lots of really hard, hard decisions. Um, bills just piling up and um, me feeling like I was doing something wrong. And I just, and I also didn't understand the industry. I didn't know that businesses spike and then they level out. They might even dip down and then they spike again. Um, I didn't even, I just didn't know a lot. And so I learned a lot during that time, but that was a, a really hard point for me, especially at that rank, because you're so close to Emerald, which you think is the Holy Grail, which you think is going to change everything. And really it just becomes a, a, a bigger business to manage and more people to, to love on and, and bless and um, a fun Maui trip each year, but literally nothing else changes about you or your, or your team or your business, but you think that it's going to, because we treat those top three ranks like they're so important. And I see, um, somebody that, that has helped me a lot lately is a Ruby, <laughs> like homegirl sitting at like 512 points and she's mentoring me right now. So, um, like that's just, just some side notes there, but that's my biggest business trial is the backwards momentum. I ranked up in 13 months and then I sat at that rank for 16 months after that. And that was one of, one of my darkest times within the business. I thought I was going to go, I thought I was going to have to go back to work as a nurse. And, um, not that I'm too prideful for that, but that just felt like a huge failure for me after retiring. So. Jen, you brought up something that sticks out big time for me. <clears throat> and that's the question of like, what's wrong with me? And I want to say to any of you guys on this call that can also relate to that, probably um, I'm five years in and probably the, the biggest lie that I wrestle with still at times, especially when, when I, um, am using my business to like, as a surrogate source of worth and identity is the constant sensation that I'm a failure. Um, and, and just how that Satan will use that term to just roll through my head. You're just failing. What's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? Why haven't I grown? Or why didn't I get that person to the rank that I thought that they could get? And, and why didn't I handle this better? And, and as a leader, um, you know, that has just been so, such an undercut to my life and experiencing, uh, I, I had a, just like coming to Jesus the other day, I was like, Lord, why do I feel like I'm failing so much? And, you know, he's so kind. I'm sorry that I'm crying because really this is meant for the other girls to talk, but I had this thought. It's so hard sometimes not to take this business so personally in a way that we wouldn't, you know, if we were going in and punching a clock or, um, or even doing 
something else where maybe um, we weren't getting paid as much. And honestly, even something that maybe took up way more of our time, but there was a little bit more structure as far as expectations went. You can, you can do nothing with this business and you can do everything with this business. And in between those two spectrums just comes a lot of self-doubt. <laughs> when you put all your worth in this gig. And I just heard the Lord say, oh, honey, you're more than a conqueror. Honey, you are more than conquerors. For everyone who loves me, you know, nothing can separate you from my love, neither height nor depth nor angel nor demons. And he goes on and on in Romans. And that was so good for me because that's just a big lie. Like Jen said, what am I doing wrong? And she mentioned how comparison is really one of the places that it starts, but it also starts in um, thinking that rank equals worth, or that if you're not, if it's not showing up in your points, then maybe you didn't work it the right way. And I just want to come against that and tell you, I've been there. If you need coaching out of that, I don't know that I'm that far ahead of you, but I'm happy to remind you of the truth. Uh, let me, let me go to the next question. Tell us about a light bulb moment that you had during a trial that allowed you to refocus with Plexus. And Rach, you go ahead and start. Sorry. Okay. I mean, for me, it's pretty obvious that, um, I mean, even when, you know, like I say, I, I was at Emerald for 11 months, hit Sapphire, got to Diamond within eight, um, and truly thought like, okay, like I'm a Diamond and I've arrived. And, you know, never once in the course of my journey had I ever gone backwards in points more than 20. So um, when I lost Diamond rank the first time, it was like, oh gosh, you know, I had no grid for what that felt like. Um, but this summer um, when, well, during the time when my husband was in treatment, um, it gave me it gave me time to kind of refocus. And, um, and I, I can remember having a conversation with Becky about like, sometimes when everything else in your life is out of control and is chaotic and is, you know, can feel so like, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Instead of letting that push you into inactivity and into that dark place of fear, you know, there was one, there was one area of my life in the midst of everything else that was seemingly so out of control. My personal IPA and my personal product productivity was one area of my day that I could control that I could sit down and I could say, I am going to um, X off this space. And, you know, fortunately, and again, we're coming up. I mean, Becky and I couldn't be more excited about the product that's going to be released on Tuesday. So le if I could encourage you to do anything, it's leverage the season surrounding new products, um, especially when you're handed a gift in December, because, uh, you know, we consider our selling season to be really January through May. So to be given the gift that we know that you're getting um, come Tuesday is amazing. What we've been encouraging you guys to do in all the power hours and things like that is get your list together now, start doing your reach outs now. And so that's really what I did during that time. I didn't know what the product that came out in May was going to be. It ended up being Joyome. Um, and then, you know, obviously HC and I'd had phenomenal personal results on that. So what I realized was nobody was going to do this for me. It's not my team's job to get me back to my rank. Um, I have to do that myself. I have to be an example. I have to set the pace. I have to not ask anybody to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. And one of the things that Becky would remind me of, is she would sort of like, you know, sometimes it's like we have this mirror, this image of ourselves of like, oh, I'm so this or I'm so that. And, and oftentimes what you've got to do with your leaders who are struggling is it's almost like you virtually are going to take them by the shoulders and you are going to remind them of who they are. 
And, and, and so I would grab Jen Wolf and I would say, nothing about you has changed, Jen Wolf, from the time when you started this business and you were in momentum and you were in growth, you know? Nothing about me had changed other than the fact that I had let my life and my circumstances beat me down. The company hadn't changed, comp plan hadn't changed, the quality of the products had only gone up. Um, I just had let myself go into, whether you want to call it a depression or just a dark night of the soul, um, but IPA was a lifeline for me. So in the months of May, June, July, no, I'm sorry, June, July, and August, I was one of the top recruiters for um, the entire region of, of uh, Texas, which, you know, obviously is huge. Um, I set a goal that I would win my first shopping spree with Plexus. Um, I added 42 customers within about a three-week period of time. Um, and it was such a reminder to me that it was like, no, I didn't just get in on this at the beginning. Like, I did the work. And, um, and that is the light bulb moment is, is that, um, even though we go through hard times and even though there may be days, like Becky said, the, the thing about what we do is that you can have days where you do nothing and you can have days where you have, like, you're so excited and you work your fingers to the bone, but the single determining factor of your success in this business is your willing to do willingness to do the income producing activities yourself. Amen, girl. Jen? Um, I said basically the same thing. Um, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And that's what I said. And I looked at my husband and I said, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go Emerald if I have to grow by 100 points at a time. And if all 100 of those points have to be 20 people that I sign. And I like had this joke that I was going to be the widest jewel in the company and I was just going to do it. Not that my team wasn't working, but that I wasn't going to wait around for anybody. And the greatest thing about that is, um, I mean, that's what I was doing in the very beginning. I assumed everybody was going to go silver with me because it literally didn't make sense to me that they wouldn't. And it wasn't until after people wouldn't that my mindset, my verbiage, my attitude started changing to, to meet them. And when I started, I was just like naive again, everyone's going to go silver. Why would you not? It's like three people, like anybody can get three people. So another thing was, um, Realizing that the person who gets you to this rank will not be the same person or team that gets you to the next rank. It might be, they might still be growing, but each rank needs more points. So to think even if that person who got you to gold is still growing and giving you points towards senior gold, that still won't be enough. <laughs> You've got to go get more people over and over and over again. And um, people are never, you know, the, the, the month that I went Emerald, I signed somebody and six months later she went gold. And then six months after that, I had another gold. I seemed to make one or two level one golds a year and thank God for it because it keeps me afloat when other teams are in their season of non-growth because everyone's going to have a different, a different pace that they grow. And so that's something that I always try to remind people. Um, another light bulb moment for me was that you can't please everyone and that you will outgrow people in order to succeed and that that is okay. I see so many women that don't want to go on this personal growth journey with me because their husbands aren't going on it with them or someone else isn't going. They don't even tell me. I can just pick up on it. And for me, I knew like, I just, I just, I'm like, he'll catch up. <laughs> I mean, they will, people will catch up with you because they don't want to be left behind. Your team will catch up with you if you grow, whether you're growing by other teams. One of the best ways to get your team to grow is to go grow another team because then they see you winning with other people. So then they know that your word is true and that actions work and pay off and nobody wants to be left behind. You know, when Rachel signed a really big Instagram influencer, I was like, oh heck no. And I think I was Emerald six months later. It really just did something. I was like, she's not gonna grow without me. Um, and so I think I actually told her, I was like, uh, you guys are not going diamond without me, which is, it's just so funny. What, what motivates different people? But you have to know that and own that and, and use that to your advantage. If you think comparing like that, if that doesn't motivate you, then don't do it. 
you know, um, I need the right type of comparison, the right type of friendly competition to motivate me, but that's just me. Um, and then I also realized that God didn't bring me to this to fail and that he, he's trying, you know, he's really trying to bless us. Um, but we need to get out of the way so many times. Um, and we need to grow. So that's another thing that I did, my light bulb moment. I did all the things that Neagle said, you know, the last two years in the month of April, I've, I've added 20 people both months. I just make April my month. Don't ask me why. I don't just spread that out over the year, but I have a thing about April. I have a lot of luck in that month. But um, I, so I do all of those things, but I wanted to talk really quickly on growing. You know, I watched a video that someone said about how God wants to bless us, but he needs us to grow. And he compared it to, he, he just loves his granddaughter. And he, his granddaughter said, granddaddy, will you buy me a red car? And he said, um, she's like 12. And he bought her the car and it sits in the driveway. And she's like, can I drive it? And he's like, no, you got to grow. He said, when you're as tall as your mommy, you can drive that, that bright, shiny, that shiny bright car. And he's like, do you know how bad I want to give it to her? He said, if, if the law would let me put her in the driver's seat, I would give it to her today. But I can't because she has to grow first. So it's a really good parallel, just kind of seeing like what God wants to bless us with, but we have to grow. And then also, I realized that common knowledge is not common practice. And uh, I think Paul talks about this in the Bible, like milk versus meat. And I feel like knowing everything that we need to do is the milk and doing it and growing and getting uncomfortable is the meat of it. And the meat is what sustains you. You can't, we're not infants. We can't live off of milk. A lot of times um, you can in the beginning, you can do milky things all the way to gold or senior gold. But then after that, you need some meat and your team needs meat. People need fed. Um, and so that's the common practice, putting into practice what you're learning. You know, I've said before in moments of frustration, like, what do you want to train on tonight? And um, I totally love my team. So this is not to be taken out of context or in the wrong way, but I'm like, I want to train on stop getting on Zoom calls and start adding people because I feel like we see the same faces and no one's growing. And that's a reflection on me and actually coaching them through that though. That's not, you know, but that's what I think so many people do is we, we think we're working, we think we're busy and it's all just milk. It's all just, you know, knowledge and none of it is actually practice because practice isn't fun, doesn't feel good. It takes discipline and stuff like that. So those were my light bulb moments. And then also realizing that um, God rewards the overcomers makes me so much more motivated to overcome every situation that I'm in and to actually get down to the nitty gritty of, of why I'm not growing. I love it. it. I wanted to say something else on that because that was one of the things um, um, over the time this summer that I really made this commitment to buckle down and do the IPA and work and, and do the hard things. You know, Becky did a video one time where she was like, we can do hard things. And it kind of became like the mantra for our team. Um, but I would oftentimes just tell God, like, I just need to know that you see me. I just need to know that you see me. And he was so good and so faithful each and every time, you know whether it was somebody out of the blue saying, girl, bring me a sample of a pink drink, you know, or tell me more about this new skincare that you have. Or, um, and one of the things for me when I um, was going for the shopping spree was it was really the first time that I reached out to people and said, I have a goal. Can you help me with it? And I'm not good at asking for help. Um, and it was so affirming from the Lord um, to have people just be like, what can I do for you? How can I help you? What can I do? You know, and my biggest takeaway from that is, you know, then in the next season that comes, the friend that says, I have this goal. Can you help me with it? To be the person in their life that says, yes, girl, you know, I will help you. What can I do? You know, how can I be a blessing to you? I love that. And I, I love Jen to you referencing like first Peter we're studying that at church. So I recognize the meat versus the milk right away. Um, I will never forget being an Emerald and, um, and zoom was just, we were just starting to use zoom a lot that year. And, um, I was terrified. I was like, I don't understand this technology. It's kind of how I feel about Instagram right now. 
Uh, this is kind of terrifying. I don't really understand this. And, and I can be extremely complacent at times and I can lack organization. And there were things that I just told myself, well, it's okay if I don't do that. But I mean, that's, that's not what a leader does. Like, like you need to be in trainings and then putting those into practice at the rank above you. Like you need to be thinking, okay, what's my next rank and what do they do? Because I'm going to be doing that now. So there's a lot of you guys that like, I'm just going to call you out. Like you've never even hosted your own Zoom call. Okay. That's like, you're getting stuck. You're totally getting stuck in exactly what, uh, Jen was talking about. So don't do that. Okay. Uh, okay. I like this question a lot. What's one of the hardest things about your business while you're going through a trial and what do you love about network marketing versus like a real job when you're going through difficult seasons? I have a feeling Jen and I may have similar answers on this again, just based on a series of voice messages that were passed back and forth this week. Y'all, Becky will tell you, I, I, have, I have been dubbed a, a green personality in Plexus, and it is because I do have a true love of research and ingredient knowledge, but the truth is, you know, on the color wheel, yellow and blue make green. I am a yellow and a blue personality masquerading as a green. So. Yeah, I love the idea. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like when you're the one that's getting up every day and having to do your hair and having to put your makeup on and your alarm goes off at whatever time and you got to get yourself ready for work and you got to get your kids ready for work and everybody's got to be out the door by the certain time and you're walking your kid into school and you see the mom in her yoga pants, you know, and you know she's headed to the gym or wherever and you're like, I want that. I want to be able to just do that. I want to be a stay at home mom. I want to be a whatever. But when you're somebody like myself who truly thrives in an environment of structure, but has zero grid or self-discipline for creating structure for yourself, um, you can flounder. And, um, and you can also, um, for myself, again, going back to, you know, the, the circumstance that I re revealed that we went through, um, it really pushed me into isolation because, you know, I was trying to protect my family. I was trying to protect our, my husband and reputations and, and all of that stuff. So it's just sort of like the walls started getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And y'all, that is death in this business. Everything that you do in this business has to be about constantly expanding your network, getting your butt out the door in the morning, whether it's to go to the gym or to volunteer at your kid's school or, God forbid, become a substitute teacher at the children's school. Please don't make me do that, Lord. <laughs> um, what I love about uh, so that's that's one of the things that is hard, has been hard for me, is creating structure in my day. Um, being someone who can work from home and not flounder, get the work that I need um, to get done, done, and not all of a sudden realize that, I mean, y'all, when Kathy Lee and Hoda are your best friends and you literally had a mental breakdown when you found out Kathy Lee was leaving the Today Show, you've got a problem. It's time to get it out the door, sister. And that's how I felt. <laughs> But um, what I do love about network marketing is that when I do have, I don't know if any of you have ever read the book Room or seen um, the movie Room, but um, one of the things the little boy in it will say that sometimes the mom has a gone day. And it's just a day where as a woman, you need to be quiet. You want to be left alone. You don't want anybody touching you. You don't, you know, like, I love that when I need a day like that, I can say, you know what, I'm going to knock out my IPA and then I'm going to go to a movie. You know, Becky and I talked about that recently. We both went to go see a movie by ourselves in the middle of the day. And it was like the best thing ever. Um, I love that when I do take a day off, I don't have to arrange for a substitute teacher or when I was an interventionist, I was contract labor for the school districts. So I, if, I, if I didn't work, I didn't get paid that day. Or if it was a school holiday, I didn't get paid. So I have income that comes in 
um, whether, like we said before, whether I choose to just do that one hour of work or whether it's like the week that I know that I have ahead of me with a product launch where, you know, all I'm going to want to do is like sit around and, and just work all day. Yeah, I said the same thing, um, especially now that I'm homeschooling. So I don't have, um, sorry, my husband's making me laugh. Um, just feeling disconnected um, is a really good word. And it's easy to fall in this trap if you're, if you're like me, because being around people doesn't fuel me. It actually drains me. Like when we go to convention and stuff, I, I, hit, a, I hit a brick wall by the third day. Usually one of the trainings I have to skip and I just sit in the room and I just rest my body and my mind. So I really don't get a lot of that alone time. And now I feel like when I do want that alone time, I should be working. So you're all, no matter where you are, but this is such a blessing because I have a whole new community of people that I'm connected with in person and on social media. And I'm like, hmm, I feel like I have fresh potentials. This is so nice because I don't have that. And I was actually thinking the other day, just feeling down on myself. And just feel like seeing like two girls that I used to work with who went to lunch together. And I just felt like I didn't belong. And I, the enemy was just throwing these thoughts at me. And I was thinking like, do I actually have real friends? <laughs> if I wasn't a leader of a team and Plexus wasn't even involved, would these girls even want to hang out with me? Is, and those were just some thoughts going, th going through my head. And I was feeling um, just some type of way. And I almost wished that I had a day job again. I really did. I was like, I, w I miss like meeting like all these people. You can make new connections. And I was always no seeing someone else who might want to And but you're just out in the world so people see your face and then you're real. And you're not like that person who just does plexus on Facebook. And then people might want to join you a little bit faster and your business moves a little faster, I feel like. Um, but then I realized that my worst day with plexus, my worst day as a stay-at-home mom is better than my best day of working. 100%. It hit me. Um, I'm so free spirited. And so I just, I thought about like, well, wait a minute, do I really want that? Do I really want to clock in and not be able to leave until someone tells me <laughs> that I have to leave? This, it's so funny, but like when people quit Plexus, their, their original why becomes their reason why not to do it, you know? And it was almost like I worked so hard to get this time freedom and now I'm complaining about it. And I used to wish that I could spend more time with my kids and now I'm homeschooling with them and I'm with them all the time and it's a problem. So you really have to keep yourself in check sometimes, um, you know, and have that, that perspective and be introspective also and really look inward and think, why am I, why am I feeling this way? What does this really mean? Um, you know, I used to be on my feet. I used to be stressed out. And the biggest thing that I remember, I actually wanted to make a post about this and I forgot. I wanted um, to, let, to remind everybody when on my days off, I would, I would wake up and I would instantly have stress. I would have this like ball of angst inside me because did I want to relax and enjoy my family that day or did I want to get errands done? And then it was like, well, do I have clean work clothes for tomorrow? And then it was like, okay, well, the next day's coming and I have to work tomorrow. So it's like I can never truly enjoy my days off because it was such a small amount of time when all of my time had to go elsewhere. And I always had to sacrifice my, um, either money or hours. I had to miss the mornings with my kids or I had to miss tucking them in at bed or I had to work part-time in the middle of the day and make way less money. And so those are just some things, you know, network marketing is better <laughs> for people like me who, who really want something like that. Um, and it just, just goes to show how quickly you can focus on the wrong things and totally lose sight of blessings. And that's why it's so important to talk to other people when you're feeling, when you're feeling those ways. Okay. So with all of this in mind, what's one word of wisdom that you guys, guys want to give someone who's experiencing a trial in their personal life or their plexus business right now? I mean, it's kind of a cheesy analogy, and I know we hear it a lot, but it really is that, you know, when you're on an airplane and they tell you if an emergency happens and the oxygen masks come down, um, to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, you know, and then put it on, you know, your kid, which literally goes against every 
form of logic that you have as a parent, you know, because you're like, no, this is my kid. I'm going to take care of it first. But y'all, when you start doing that with your business, you go into management mode. When you start forsaking your own prospecting, your own IPA, your own professional development, your own, and Jen alluded to this earlier a little bit about how oftentimes there are things that we can do that make us feel like we're on acti like inactivity. Like I got on 17 Zoom calls this week. Okay, but what did it yield, you know? And I've really had to look back and reflect on even some of the, um, the leadership programs that I'm paying to be a part of. Is it bearing fruit? Because going back to the word again, you know, anything that's healthy, anything that's alive, anything that's growing is bearing fruit. Now, there's 90 day rules to things like just because you start doing IPA tomorrow, you may not see the fruit of that for a while, just like you don't stick a seed in the ground and expect to walk out the next day and you've got an apple tree. You know, um, it takes time and you have to cultivate it, but it really is prioritizing yourself first, which can seem so counterintuitive, especially for moms and women. Um, so I just wanted to say my words of advice. Um, what I realized is that God doesn't need me to be a jewel. Um, he needs me to be steadfast and to obey. And kind of like what Becky was talking about earlier, how without even meaning to, your worth goes into that rank. Um, there are, and it's so odd, there's times where I'm like, that's all my paycheck is, I worked so hard. And then there's times where I'm like, that was my paycheck, I hardly worked at all. And both of those feelings are not gratitude, they're not grace, they're not, it's just, it's just like, I feel bad about my paycheck, whether I work really hard or not, or not enough. And that's, like I said, introspection, you know, and um, really just, I think we need to realize like God just needs us to work this and to let the blessings flow through us. And one thing that he showed me this past year is like, it's more, imp I didn't win something. I don't know. And there was like jewel being on the jewels page is just like cray cray. Sometimes they're like all these jewels and they're like, they won this and they won this. And I went and I didn't, and I'm okay with failure. But yet I was like, Ugh, if I have to check the notif one more notification for that stupid page where everyone's succeeding. And then I was like, man, like, is this how other people feel on our page? And so it was very convicting for me to, be, to just remember um, that as we grow through this, we need to just bless people and love on them right where they're at. Create a culture where every single person feels like they matter and are loved, but a business where only the people who earn it get your time. And like Neagle said, you take care of yourself first. Um, another piece of advice that I have is that, um, you know, your trials really do grow you. But, and that sounds so cliche, but like if you think about it in the Bible, whenever Jesus is, is not to get super preachy on you guys, but whenever he's telling a story, everything that he tells is a parable or a story. And it's because those are relatable to people. And people will understand it better and they'll, you know, it'll sink in a little bit deeper. And um, your, what you go through with this business or even in life is going to be so much more relatable, your hardships and how you come through those. And when you can tell that story, that's going to really, that is, that's going to be so much more inspirational and better off for your future team than if you just know all the things and you did all the things. I mean, think about it now, the people who just don't ever seem like they struggle at all. We're not, we're not inspired by that. And if anything, we get some resentment built up towards that. And really just kind of realizing that I was complete. Like we're complete the day we're born and we're even more complete when we get born again. And like so much, so everything above and beyond that is just like a blessing and it's just life and it's ways that God can work through you. You know, and it's just as important that a silver ambassador on your team makes $300 a month to pay for her products and to pay her electric bill. Like that makes me like so emotional, especially from where I've come and the people, you know, like I'm, I'm more thankful that like Mary down the street doesn't have anymore. She's my neighbor and that she can pay a couple extra bills. <laughs> that means more to me than these people that can sign 
10 people in a month and help me, you know, my, my, my leader, obviously the people who are winning are going to stay, you know, when you have a loyal team and they're making a little bit of money, that matters more than any big check that I can earn than any silly green jewel that I get when I stand on stage that now is in my filing cabinet, you know, like that's what really matters in all of this. And so many of us worry and we pray and we get down on ourselves and we overthink this and, and when we're doing all of that, that's just like the enemy winning because we are not focused on ways that God can work through us. We're not focused on any opportunities that are coming our way and how we can help someone else and how we can let our trials inspire somebody else someday. Absolutely. God, I love, God, I, love I want to tell you all um, that if you haven't been through a personal trial or a business trial yet, you know, just wait, give it time. <laughs> I think uh, my first year of Plexus, I had a miscarriage and it was an, a miscarriage at 11 weeks and it caught me so off guard and, um, you know, recovering from that and I'm working full time and, um, get into my second year of business and I, um, am pregnant, um, with a rainbow baby. So exciting, but literally the day I give birth to her in the hospital, we had a a back office changeover and I spent like the first three months of her life on the phone with customer service. Um, and then the third year of my business, I finally retire from my job. I, I, I go diamond and it's like, Oh, it can only get better from here and go on vacation. And my husband has a stroke and I spend the entire uh, week of my vacation in a hospital in Denver with my husband, just not knowing what's going to happen. And thank the Lord he made it amazing recovery. And, um, you know, the next year of my business was God calling us away from our home and calling us to obey him and leave and leave my husband's career and a huge step of faith. And so finally get here and, um, and I will cry again, but, but this fall, the, the big thing for me was just the death of an old friend, a death of an old friend that came out of nowhere. And um, I remember thinking, like, for me, what's hard about um, trials is sometimes I'm good at, at um, taking the grief or the, the stress and the trauma and just being like, I'll deal with this later, you know? And that's just not how life works. You can only do that so often before, you know, everything's going to fall back in your lap at some point. So one thing, one a word of encouragement I want to give you is that grief will take space. There are some things are going to happen in your life and they are going to demand space. And there's two ways to respond. You can be a workaholic and ignore that and not give it the space and it will catch up and show up somewhere in your life. You'll either be biting your children's heads off or losing important relationships or working yourself into physical duress. Uh, the other thing is to go kind of into victim mode and like to abandon everything and, and maybe to blame and all of that. And, and neither one of those are really going to help you, you know, give something the space and the attention that it deserves. I will say this, just like on a practical note, the more that you organize your business, the more it'll, you'll be able to take the space your life demands like a week in the hospital <clears throat> and you'll still have team members who are staying connected to you, not only praying for you and supporting you, but working as well. Or, you know, you'll go, okay, like I'm coming back after two weeks of, you know, being caught in the brain fog of grief. What am I doing today? Oh, I know what I'm doing today because I, I create a calendar that I follow for my business. Um, we're here to help you guys with some of that stuff. That's an area that I am really praying for in my own life is just better organization. I will say that, um, I like part of the reason why I love these two women is like Jen said, I'm, I think Rachel said it too. I'm, I'm way more drawn to the real life stories and whatever you guys have been through or are going through, just trust me, you've got great community here. Um, but what we really want to do is see you thrive. And as Jen said, grow while you're struggling and wrestling and trust me, you're in good company and, um, I'm just so, I'm so, so, so grateful for this team. And I'm really, really excited about 2019. I will tell you, um, Rach and I have a little bit of an insight of what's coming and just buckle up. Like it's going to be a busy spring. I, gosh, I'm so ready for, <laughs> I'm so ready for it to get busy. Um, so in closing, just thanks you guys. Thanks so much for sharing and being real. And then even just sharing practical stuff. 
What'd you say, Rach? Do what? I can't hear you. <laughs> I cannot hear you. You didn't do question number six that you asked us about. That oh, I figured that was just going to be a good, that was, that was question number six was your one word of advice, but. Oh, okay. I, I just wanted to keep it down to one hour or two. I'm so grateful for y'all's time as well. Listen, um, I will post a recording of this in, in the well team and you guys can share, but I also want you please be looking tomorrow morning because we've got a plan for connecting you guys. Um, to a way to reach out to your prospects for the next, what, 48 hours until this launch happens. Um, and I'm really excited. We're, we're organizing our stuff and getting it ready to go. And then we're going to pass it along to you guys and make it easy for you and your teams. And I so appreciate you guys. Yeah. And I love you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Rach, so much for your time tonight. Absolutely. One welcome. thing I want you guys to know, like, when I visited with my coach last week, one of the biggest things that he said is do not let your people go into holiday mode. Now, does that mean that we want you working on Christmas day and, you know, neglecting your families and all of that stuff? Absolutely not. Um, but I also want to tell you that in the five years that I've been with Plexus, we have never launched a product in the middle of December. And um, like, if you don't run with this, you're going to regret it. So um, get your list together now. Like Becky said, just kind of keep, keep your pulse um, on, on the well or on, you know, your, your level ones. I mean, not your level ones, but your sponsors team page. And I have a feeling it's going to be like one of those weeks where you feel like you're in the millennium Falcon and star Wars and you've just got stuff coming at you, you know? Um, but it's exciting and it's fun and, um, and it's going to feel good. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great night.